Welcome back. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to run Python code, and we're going to talk about the very basics of Python. Now, Python is what's known as an interpreted language, which means that when we run our code, we don't actually need to compile it, unlike some other languages. So in order to run code in Python, all we need to do is, from our terminal, make sure that we are in our Hacking the Humanities folder. And I'm just going to hit ls to make sure all of the files are there, and they are. Now to run one of these files, all we need to do is we need to do python space and then one of the file names, in this case, the very first one. If I hit enter, you can see that nothing happens. And you'll see why that's the case in a minute. But this was a valid python file and it ran. Now often you'll find yourself typing python and hitting enter. Maybe you meant to run a file and you did this on accident or you did it on purpose and it will open up the Python Interactive Interpreter. And from here, you can actually interactively write Python. But remember that when you use this, it won't save any of your code. So once you leave your terminal or you quit this interpreter, it's not going to remember what you did. Here you can see I'm using Python 3.6 in the Anaconda distribution that was released in April of 2018. Now from here, I can actually start writing any sort of code I want. Let's just say 567 times 32. You can see that's 18,144. Now, the first time you do this, you might not know how to exit out of this without quitting your terminal. Well, it's actually quite easy. You just type quit, open parentheses, close parentheses, and hit enter. And you'll back back out into your command prompt. Now, let's actually take a look at that very first piece of code that I showed you. So if we go over into Visual Studio Code, there's a very nice feature if we click these icon buttons all we need to do is we can click Open Folder, and I can actually open up all of these folder or all of these files at once. So I'll click Open here, and we can see on the sidebar here, now we have all of the different files that we're going to be looking at in this class. So let's start talking about this very first file. This tells us a little bit about what comments in Python are. Uh, if you want to write something in your code and you don't want the interpreter to actually run it, you want to use a hashtag or a pound sign or whatever you want to call it. And the Python interpreter will ignore anything that comes after that on the same line. Now you want to do this because you'll want to add information into your code to help people understand it. Because if somebody else looks at your code, they might not know what you meant to do. And you yourself, six months later, will probably have forgotten what your code is trying to do. So you want to, in a lot of detail, explain exactly what it's doing. And you can use these um, hashtags to do exactly that. You can also use a hashtag to comment out a line of code if you just want your program to skip over it. Now, sometimes you want comments that take up multiple lines. And in order to do that, you want to type three single quotation marks. And then you can type as much as you want on as many lines as you want, and then close it out with another three quot quotation marks. And this will let you type multi-line comments. Now, Python is made, out, made up of a number of basic data types. And I'm just going to show you a few of the mo most important ones. The first are strings. And strings just contain information that we want to treat as language. And this is going to be one of the most important things we're going to deal with in this class. To create a string, you just need to use double quotation marks or single quotation marks. So these are both valid strings in Python. Integers are just whole numbers. 1, 2, 100,000, 824,825, negative 50. These are just round numbers, and Python's going to treat them a little bit differently than the next data type, floating point numbers, or floats. So here you can say 1.0, 2.0, negative 120.3, 3.14159. These are created when you put a decimal place inside your number. And you can see a nice feature of Visual Studio Code when you highlight this. It'll actually tell you what your data type is. Here it's an int. There are also Boolean data types, true and false. These will be really useful when we want to write programs with interesting logic in it. There's also a none type. That is, if something doesn't exist, it's considered a none type. And this will evaluate to false when we start writing programs that ask questions. And the last thing I wanted to talk about, this isn't really a data type, but it's kind of the classic thing you'll see in programming languages, is a print statement. If you want your code to actually appear to do something from your console, you'll often need to print something. And this just says, hello world. And this isn't printing it to a printer. Instead, it's just going to run this 
on the console. So if I run this code, if I type Python 01 Ultra Basic 2 and I hit this, you can see that it says, hello world. Now, the next thing that I want to show you are variables. These are critical for writing programs that do really anything. What a variable is, is it's simply a placeholder for a piece of data. Now, in Python, you create these with the equal sign. Now, you can name your variables really anything you want or almost anything you want as long as they start with a letter. Now, I should say that it's a good idea to make sure your variable names make sense because you want to be able to look at your code and know what it's trying to do. Um, you should avoid reserved words as well, and often when you type a reserved word, you'll know it is that because VS Code will highlight it. So, for instance, list is a reserved word, and it will turn bluish, at least in my application, so you'll know I shouldn't be using this. You cannot start a variable name with a number, and you should avoid capital letters because they're used for other constructs in Python. So if you look at these variables, a equals yum, b equals 5, c equals 5.2. These are perfectly valid, but they're not very informative. Um, these next variables, feeling equals hungry, current year equals 2018, height in centimeters equals 173.2. These are much better because they're very informative. And these are in what's known as camel case, where the second word is capitalized. This is convention. You don't really need to do this. Um, you can also use underscores instead, uh, so you could use current year as underscore year, or you can just not even capitalize it. That's fine too. Now, I should point out that Python is case sensitive, so it does think that current year with the capital Y is different than current year with the lowercase y, so be aware of this. Do not do something like this, where str equals friend. Now, you can do this, but str is a, stands for string, and it's a reserved word. But when you do this, you overwrite that str with just friend, and it can lead to some very weird behaviors. So you can actually just print out a, b, c to what's, see what's in those variables. Um, but you can also print out multiple things easily in the same line. So print feeling, current year, height, centimeters, and string. So when I run this, it'll show me A, B, C on different lines, and then feeling, current year, and height in centimeters, and that string in another. So I'll just type out this um, code, Python, and hit Enter. Turn my volume down. And you can see that it actually just printed out the value of all of those variables. The last thing that I want to talk about in this particular video is f-string. And this sounds a little weird, but let's just go and look at the next thing. And I'm showing this because it's going to be a really useful thing for us as we're printing things out. And this is new in Python versions 3.6.2 and up, I think. So here, I've just set the variable age to 34. And then I've printed f and then the quotation marks. And my string is, in curly brackets, age. And I put this variable inside here. And when the Python interpreter runs, it'll take whatever value is in age and stick it right into this string. This is a really handy thing to do to build interesting outputs for our console. So I'll go back over to my terminal. And I'll go ahead and run Python 02, variables 2, and hit Enter. And now you can see my name, or excuse me, my age is 34. So that's a little bit about the most basic things in Python, types, creating variables, and a little bit about printing. Now, I should point out that Python is a little bit different than other programming languages in that it's not strongly typed. That is, you don't need to tell Python what your variable type is going to be. So it's not like Java, it's not like C, so it's a little bit different in that way. This does make it a little easier to write, but it can be a little more ambiguous as you're building code. For our sake, that probably won't matter. But in the next episode, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about strings, their various methods, and the things you can do with them. So thank you, and I hope to see you in the next episode.